Assassin's Creed Shadows has an UI to indicate some special attacks that the player can perform. In this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate the layout of this UI in Unity. I'm also going to show you how to make this shining effect. First, I'm going to create a canvas for our UI. So right click, go to UI and then Canvas. Next, we are going to create a container to hold our icons for our skills. So right click on top of our canvas object and then select create empty. Next, we need some images for our menu. So I'm going to import four images into our project. And now we are going to select all of them to configure them all at once. In the inspector, we are going to change the texture type from default to sprite. To apply these changes, we have to press the apply button. To display these images, we have to right click our container, go to UI and then raw image. Now drag one of your images into the texture field. Now do this three more times for the other three images. Select your container game object. In the inspector, click Add Component and type Grid Layout Group. Where it says Constraint, change from flexible to fixed column count. Leave constraint count as 2 since we only want 2 columns. Change the spacing to something like 15 so the icons are not touching each other. Ok, now we have a, a square grid of icons, but if you recall from the game's UI, it's in a diamond shape. To achieve this, we are going to rotate this container 45 degrees in the Z axis. We now have our diamond shape, but the images are tilted to the side. We are going to fix this with a shader. This shader will fix the rotation of the images and produce our shining effect I showed at the beginning of the video. For this shader, we are going to use Shader Graph and the Universal Rendering Pipeline. To install them, go to Window, then Package Manager. In this new window, we are going to click to see Unity Registry Packages and then search for Universal RP. Select it and click Install. When you install Universal RP, Unity automatically installs Shader Graph, so we don't have to worry about that. Next, in order for our project to actually use the URP, we have to first create a URP asset. So right click on your Assets folder, go to Create, Rendering, and select URP Asset with Universal Renderer. To use this asset we just created, we have to go to Edit, Project Settings, select Graphics. Under Scriptable Render Pipeline Settings, click the little circle and select our asset that we just created. And that's it for our URP configuration. Now, for our shader, let's create a new shader graph file. So, right click, go to create, shader graph, URP, and then sprite unlit shader graph. The shader graph is a visual tool to create shaders. Shaders are basically programs that run on your GPU. So, if we want our objects to use this shader, we need to create a material. The material is like a container that holds a reference to the shader that we want to use and maybe some values that we want to pass into our shader. So, to create a material with our shader, you right-click the shader, go to Create, and then Material. To make our images use this material, select all of the objects and then drag our new material into the material field. The images will turn white because we haven't programmed our shader yet. So let's double click our shader to fix that. The first thing we need is to get our images to show again. 
For this, let's create a sample texture 2D node. For the texture field, we are going to create a new variable of type texture 2D and name it underscore main text. You might be tempted to give it a better name, but we need to use this one because Unity automatically populates underscore main text with the textures that we assigned to our raw images earlier. If we give it any other name, we won't be able to get our textures to show. Drag this variable into the shader graph and connect it to the texture input. If we connect our sample texture 2D to the output color of our shader and save the asset, we are going to see our images again. Now, to fix the rotation of our images, we are going to use a rotate node. Change the unit from radians to degrees to make it easier to edit. Since we rotated the container of our images 45 degrees, we are going to rotate the images minus 45 degrees to get them to the right position again. Depending on the images you're using, you're probably going to see a weird effect on the images. That is because our images do not fill the entire square anymore because of the rotation we performed. To fix this, we are going to increase the size of our images a little bit to fill the entire square again. For this, create a tiling and offset node. The offset offsets the image position and the tiling indicates how many times the image is going to repeat in a given space. So if we increase the tiling to two, for example, it means that we want to fit two images in the square. So it's going to become smaller. If we reduce it below one, it means that the square holds only a portion of our image. So our image is going to become larger and that's what we want. In my case, if I set the tiling to 0.7, the image is big enough to fit the square. Because of the tiling, we have to fix the position. So set the offset to 0.15. Now our image is displaying how we want. Let's make our shining effect now. This is how it's going to work. We have the color of our image so what we need to do is to add a white strip to a portion of the image and move it to give the shiny effect. We are going to start with an UV node. If you see the output of this node, you can see that it represents UV values with colors. UVs are basically X and Y coordinates. At the bottom left, we have X equals zero. And at the bottom right, it goes all the way up to one. These values are the ones we are interested in. To get this range of values, we will use a split node to isolate only the x-axis. As you can see, the split node has color outputs. So red is the x-axis and green is the y-axis. We want the x-axis, so we will use the red output. Connect it to a distance node. The distance node is showing a black bar at the beginning because our x value starts at zero. So the distance is zero. All the way to the right, it is white because the distance is one. Zero is black, one is white. If we set our distance value to 0.5, for example, the black bar is going to be in the middle because our x value is 0.5 in the middle. So the distance is going to be zero at that point. And as we move away from this value, it becomes white the farther it goes. Since we need a white stripe instead of a black one, we are going to use a 1 minus node to flip the values. To be able to get a well-defined bar, we can use a step node and set the value of the edge to something like 0.95. This means that any values below 0.95 will become black and any value above it will become white. Right now, our bar is a little bit too well defined. So to make it look nicer, we can use a smooth step instead of the step node. The smooth step works similarly to the step node, but it interpolates the values between a range. So we get a smoother transition from white to black. 
Now, to make everything work together, we are going to combine our texture values with this node that we just created. So, create a add node and connect everything we've done so far. If you press Save Asset, you are going to see a shining bar on top of the image. Now, to animate this bar, we are going to create a variable in our shader called Distance. The type of this variable is going to be a float. Now, drag it to our shader graph and connect it to the B value of the Distance node. Now, to animate the shining effect, we are going to control it using a script. So, right click, go to create, and then C sharp script. Since we want to pass some values to our shader and we know that our material holds those values, we first are going to create a reference to our material and mark this variable as a serialized field. This way, it will appear in the inspector, so we can assign the material we created previously to this variable. Next, we are going to create a coroutine to hold the logic of our animation. We are going to create a variable for our initial position, and this variable has to have a negative value because our line has a width, so we give it a negative value so it's not showing on the screen when the animation starts. Next, we define how frequently this function is going to run when we start our animation. So create a new wait for seconds called delay and give it a value of 0.01. Next, we need a reference to the property that we are going to update. For this, we are going to use the property to ID function and pass a string with the name of our property. Okay, now we are going to make the logic for the animation. So we will update this position variable until it reaches the destination position. So for this, we are going to create a while loop and this is going to run while position is less than this value. Inside this loop, we are going to update our position to make the line move. So we increase the position variable and next, we actually change the variable in our material to be passed to our shader. So write mat.setFloat, use our distance ID that we got earlier, and then pass our position. After this, we are going to make our function wait for a little bit, so we can see the animation playing. So you write yield, return, and the delay variable that we created earlier. With this, our coroutine is complete. Now, to play this animation, we have to actually call this function. For this, we are going to use the update method. So, we are going to call this function when we press the spacebar for testing purposes. So, if input.getKeyDown uh, keycode.space To start the function, we are just going to call start coroutine and then pass the coroutine that we created. This is all we have to do in our script. Now back in Unity, we are going to create a new game object. We are going to drag our script on top of this object. And then we are going to select this object and drag our material into the material field of this object. And that's it. Now, if we run our game, and press spacebar, we are going to see our shining effect. If this video was helpful to you, I'd like to ask you for a like. And if you want to see future tutorials, you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day.